I think uh, Social Security uh, is, uh, you know, is a lot of people depended on it, a lot of people paid into it. Certainly we ought to honor the contract as people have paid into it. We ought to honor the contract under the terms with which we took their money to put into Social Security. What the future is going to hold, I don't know. If we had continued to have an $8 an hour economy in the state of Kentucky, I don't know how people are going to be able to afford Social Security. I am very protective of Social Security out on their contract. If they want to set up another contract and ask us to take part in that, uh, then people ought to have the choice of whether to have an alternative or not. The most important thing that we will be able to do is that the people of Kentucky will have a voice in this administration. That is the very single most important thing. That those doors will be open to them. There are so many programs and so many things that we will, in fact, work on. But the one thing that you can count on is that the people of Kentucky will be included in this process. That this exclusive exclusiveness and um, you're not allowed to get in unless you pay that thousand dollars or you contributed to my campaign. We will put an end to that. We're going to open our doors for the greatest ideas for those individuals that are entrepreneurs and they've led in whatever field or industry they're working in. They're now going to be re-invited to participate in the process of government so that we together can restore Kentucky to prosperity. Funding for veterans is very similar to um, discuss, the discuss, our discussion with Social Security. Funding for veterans should be essentially unlimited. They've, they've sacrificed and risked their lives in the service of this country, sir. I am very veteran friendly and I'm very pro-military in that regard. We need to uplift them. They deserve a lot more credit than they're receiving currently, for sure. I think that the veterans are getting short end of the stick. There is no doubt about that. Uh, I'm all for making sure that the veterans' hospitals uh, get the proper funding from the federal government and that the state aid and assist them in any way possible. Uh, I've, uh, I'm a Marine. Uh, I have a very soft spot in my heart uh, for veterans. And uh, I think it's a shame that the way they've been treated in, in, in stories that I've seen. I am glad to see where the VA has now instituted a policy where the veterans can smoke marijuana in the veterans' hospitals, the VA hospitals, in those states where marijuana is legal as a medicine. So I think, uh, I think that that's just a one small step we could implement in the state of Kentucky. Uh, otherwise, uh, everything I can possibly do for the veteran in the state of Kentucky, I'm going to do as governor. What are your thoughts on incentives for bringing motion picture productions to Kentucky? I am a huge fan of the film industry. I've been associated with the film industry, um, having lived in Park City, Utah, so I've associated with Sundance Films. Um, Kentucky is a fabulous place to shoot a movie, so I would like to do a lot of things to increase those incentives so that movies will come and shoot here. You know, we've had great success with Secretary. It's been our greatest public relations uh, endeavor in five years. Um, this movie has done more for Kentucky, and I think that if we could continue to solicit more movies to be shot here, I think it would just really add to our overall economic successful. So and it's a beautiful state and we have a tremendous number of locations and sites so I believe that if we can possibly offer tax incentives to get uh, the motion pictures to locate here I think we should it's ridiculous not to. Not only is it promote employment but it and bring in new money but it'll also brand Kentucky as the tourist destination that it ought to be. So any way that we can possibly promote Kentucky nationwide or worldwide and especially through movies, which have that natural ability to, to move across the world and to, to portray us as we ought to be portrayed. Contacts, networks, a promotion of the movies itself, anything that will promote Kentucky uh, and can be done through the uh, cinematography, uh, we ought to be best friends and partners on. Well, I think that we ought to tax and license and regulate marijuana as a cash crop, number one. Uh, I think that uh, I, I think that that is a black market in billions of dollars. It's running side by side with the with the uh, above ground market. Uh, the only people making money off that market are the criminals and the international criminal syndicates. I think we ought to take it out of the black market, put it up in a tax and regulated market. I think it would increase tax revenues in the state of Kentucky from 500 million to a billion dollars a year without putting it on the shoulders of the wage earner and small business. It is ridiculous that that isn't being done. I also think we ought to start raising hemp as a fuel crop. Hemp is petroleum. You get 20 barrels of petroleum off an acre of hemp. Our farmers ought to be allowed to produce hemp in competition with the petrochemical pipeline. It's a far better agri-fuel than corn ever thought about being. You don't need flatlands, pesticides, herbicides, or fertilizers to grow it. And so I think that uh, we ought to reinstitute hemp as a cash crop in the state. I also think that as my running mate, as I say, is a terrific marketer. 
We ought to be branding Kentucky as the horse capital of the world. Everything we ought to do ought to have horses and thoroughbreds on it. Uh, we'd like to build the world's largest statue of a horse out at the Kentucky Horse Park to act as a tourist attraction, just like the Golden Arch in St. Louis is. So uh, we, you know, we, we need to elevate Kentucky into prosperity, and I'd like to do it without having smoke and noise industries. If we can possibly locate the intelligent industries here by, by offering them uh, uh, a, a quality of life that they're not going to find in any other state by assuring them that our government agents are going to treat you with respect and dignity. They're not out to make your life miserable. They're out to empower you and enlighten you and educate you. And that uh, that's our whole philosophy of government. We think we can bring in some of the better intentions, higher paying jobs, just by increasing the quality of life in the state of Kentucky. Well, I know I know these things for a fact. As governor, I, I named the Adjutant General, the head of the National Guard in the state of Kentucky. When I name that National Guard, which is my first official act, I'm going to order him to ground every military helicopter that's hovering over the fields and gardens of the people of the state of Kentucky at this time. This is America, not Afghanistan, and we're not an occupied territory, and we're not going to treat our citizens like we are one. So he's under my command, and I can order him to make sure that we don't use the military against the people in these so-called marijuana strike task forces and, and, and having helicopters uh, uh, beating the shingles off of these houses up in eastern Kentucky as they come down to look for a green natural plant. As governor, I named the head of the Kentucky State Police. I can name the Kentucky State Police uh, 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 chief, and I can tell him, look, we're not going to spend our time arresting people caught with misdemeanor amounts of marijuana. We're going to give them a ticket. We're not going to stop them on the road and bring dogs up to search their cars and sniff their cars unless they give us a good probable cause reason to do that. We're not going to waste our tax dollar, our law enforcement dollar, chasing marijuana smoking. We're going to use that tax dollar to go after the truly dangerous drugs in this state, crack and Oxycontin and methamphetamine. And so I think that that will improve quality of life in the state of Kentucky. I think it would be a far more effective uh, use of the tax dollar. And I think it will reinstitute respect and dignity on the way that our law enforcement treats the people.